Hi guys, I'm going to turn it over to him and I'm going to start pulling a few of y'all. Mr. Ellen? Thank you, sir. I'm glad to be here. Glad, glad I could get you, you guys out of class for a minute. Hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you find it interesting. We're talking about swarms. And there's a lot of honeybees in your area, if y'all don't know about this. Um, right down the street, Oxbow Meadows, we have probably eight or nine hives down there. And we, we as a beekeeping club, go in there and we work with those. Chattahoochee Valley beekeepers. And if we have any swarms like this, we will come get them from for, for you, from you for free, in most cases. Uh, because we like to be, we want to keep them, we want to save them. Why do they do this? The, okay, your hands up. Why, why do they do this? Is in the springtime, their house gets too crowded. The queen, the queen one queen bee we're talking about, she lays between 2,000 and 2,500 eggs per day this time of year so she is just an egg laying machine so they get too crowded in there and they think oh no we're running out of room and so they swarm so the queen takes about half of the worker bees with her and they go fly up and they land on a tree somewhere and they send out scout bees and they look for a new home so after the honeybees do this in the first colony what happened to the queen she left right so there's only how many queens per hive per colony there's only one. Great. Great. So the colony they left has to get busy making a new queen. And how they do that is they make a, sh uh, a cup here. And it looks like a peanut on the outside of it. And inside of that peanut, the queen lay, she has an egg, but it's royal jelly here that that queen eats all of her, all of her life. Whenever the, the egg is laid, they feed her this white jelly right here, and that's what turns her into the queen. So she doesn't eat any pollen like the workers do. And the workers are all girls, right? So she is hatched out in about 16 days. She's the biggest bee in the colony, but she's also the, the it grows out the fastest. So after she goes off, she comes back to the hive, and there she is. And a lot of beekeepers, like myself, we put a dot on her, or we put a number on her. See, here's a little bit better picture of it. So, on the, in the top photo here, you guys see all those smaller bees in a circle around the queen. That's called the queen's court. And the queen, if I were to take her out of here and put her on a tree or on a park bench or something by herself, she would not live. She can't make it on her own. She can't feed herself. She can't groom herself. She can't do anything for herself. So she relies on her worker bees here to take care of her. It's kind of sad. It? It's kind of sad the queen can't take care of herself or eat or do anything on her own. She does, She's busy all the time. She's busy laying eggs this time of year. So these bees right here, when they're hatched, I'm going to... This is kind of a nasty picture, but this is what's on the inside of a, of a cell. This is when the, the egg is laid, it turns into a larva and a pupae, and of course it turns into a worker bee. And this worker bee right here hatches out, and it's a little bitty hairy, hairy girl. Y'all see all that hair on? Y'all go ahead and eat, eat your cheese balls before I forget, okay? Go ahead and eat your cheese balls the ones who wants them. All right, some of you, some of you, back to you over here, you're doing this on your pants leg or you're doing this trying to get all that cheese off your hand same thing happens with a honeybee see all this hair on that honeybee the pollen sticks to the honeybee just like the cheese will stick into your hand make sense so you see how easy it was for that cheese to stick to your to your hands a honeybee has about three three million hairs on them yeah, three million hairs. It's this the same amount as the gray squirrel that y'all see running around. So all that hair creates static electricity. And I'm sure y'all have been to the trampoline park or come down a slide and you feel the electricity and you go shock somebody. It's same thing with a honeybee. That honeybee, collect, uh, the, the, the pollen, it's like a magnet to the honeybee. So whenever they get all pollen around it, they do just like you boys and girls did and clean their hands and clean their body and they put it on their back hind legs in a pollen basket and this pollen basket here see that little yellow dot right there they can take that back to the beehive back to the colony where they live 
and they hand it off to a worker bee inside. And they chew it up, and they add their saliva to it, and they grind it up and make something called bee bread. And, so, and on this frame over here, you will see some pollen inside of those cells. And that's what's bee bread. That's what they feed the babies, the, the brood. So honeybees live where? They can live anywhere, right? They can live pretty much anywhere. They don't, they don't live in, on a tree branch, but they have to be inside somewhere. They can live inside the walls of, of your house. They can live in your garage. They can live in apartments. They can, they can live pretty much anywhere. We only give them a place to stay here. They don't have to stay in this, bee, in, in this hive, okay? If they don't like it, they'll fly off, and it happens sometimes. You look up, and I have all my bees in my backyard, and they'll be flying and swarming, and, and they'll leave. Sometimes they just don't like this particular box we've given them. So they build their own house, and inside of that is wax. And so they build their own cells. They're hexagonal shape. So if you're to look at a beehive and pull up one of the frames, kind of like what's over there, you'll see the brood, and you'll see a few empty spots here. And the queen, her job is to go around and look for those empty spots and put an egg in there. Because the more workers you have, the more honey you're going to collect. So therefore, you have a better chance of surviving to the next winter, right? That's all, all this is about, survival to the next winter for honeybees. Because in end of June, end of July, we don't have any more flowers, do we? So they have to collect as much honey and nectar as they can to carry them over to the next year. And that's, that's what their job is about. Sometimes they collect more than what they need, so I take the excess. Inside that place I was talking about, if they build inside of the wall, if we cut a hole in it, this is the honeycomb that you would see. This is what it looks like from the side here. From the side. So let me tell you a little bit about what I do. When I go to my backyard, the first thing I grab is my smoker. And the reason that is, can somebody tell me why I use the smoker? What? I, I saw your hand first. Thank you. Tell me. Okay. All right. All right. Your hand is up. What? Do what else? To paralyze. He, he says paralyze. Okay. One last one. Ma'am? I'm sorry. Got to go to sleep. He, he he is on the right right track. Yes, what I do whenever I go in my backyard, I put some pine shavings in here or some pine straw, and I light a fire in it, and I let it burn for a minute, and the flames get real tall, and it gets real smoky, and then I put some more pine straw on top of it, and it puts the flame out. And I close the lid, smoke comes out here, and you want a cool smoke. You don't want a hot, and you don't want flames coming out because the bees, well the the, the um. This fire will burn the bees' wings off if you're not careful. So you want a cool smoke. You want it. So whenever I go into the hive, I'll puff it right at the entrance and on top. What happens to the bees is they think the forest fire is coming, or their house is going to get burned up. When you think of something burning inside your house, you want to get out quick, don't you? Because you want to be safe. That's the that's the best thing to do. Just get out and run. Honey bees are in the paper. Honeybees don't think that way. They will go down into the hive and grab as many resources as they can. They will grab all the honey they can. They will grab anything they can take with them because if their house is on fire, think about it, they have to start a new place. They have to build all their new wax. They have to start over. So they carry as much with them as they can. Have you all ever been to Thanksgiving or Christmas or even a birthday party and you've eaten so much and you just can't, can't, can't make it anymore? And you just want to lay down and be lazy? Sometimes you can't even tie your shoes, right? So that's the same thing that happens to a honeybee. They get so big, so so fat because they've eaten so much honey that they can't bend over and use their stinger on us. So that's why we use a smoker because that's about the most humane thing we found to be able to help us work with our honeybees. Okay, after that, of course, we have to have gloves, right? We have to have gloves. I use two different kinds of gloves. If I have a really, really, really mean beehive, I may have to get my leather glove. So think of honeybees kind of like dogs or cats. You know, some cats and dogs are very nice. Some of them are very mean, right? 
Same thing with honeybees. Some of the bees are mean. Some of them are very nice. So it depends on, on what I have in my backyard. I like to use this one because I can feel what I'm doing. And I can feel the bees through my, through, through my glove. This one I use and put under my suit. So that way the bees can't crawl up in my cuffs and sting my arms. And of course, one of the last things is, is my suit, okay? Is my beekeeping suit. You guys wanna go back there? So this right here, this part protects my eyes, protects my ears, protects my head and my neck. The worst two places I've ever, ever been stung is one time in my nose and once in my ear. And I, the one in my ear, I thought I was gonna go deaf because my ears swelled up so bad. What happened was my beekeeping suit had a little hole in it right here. See how these two zippers aren't together? And a bee got up in here and it stung. So I got a little problem with this bee, with, with this suit, it's too small for me, right? Some of y'all may be able to fit in, right? Right? No, you don't think so? Let me tell you, you're never too young to start learning how to, how to keep bees, okay? It's very, very fascinating. It's very fun, and I think you'd enjoy it. So that's why I brought this smaller suit with me today, because I want you boys and girls to see here, you're never too young. I know someone who has their four-year-old out there helping them with honeybees. So, so, four years old, and they do make smaller suits than them. Now, when I order my woodenware, what we call this woodenware, we have to put it together because it didn't come together with this painted already. It doesn't come all nailed together, so we have to nail it together. So it's just like putting the puzzle pieces together. Do y'all like doing puzzles? Y'all like doing the puzzle? You know, some of y'all don't, some of you do. All this is is a big puzzle. The, this is a frame that we put together, and there are 10 frames in one box. So uh, I put several hundred of these together in the springtime or, or over winter when the bees aren't real busy. So you put it together, it makes a frame like this. Each one of these frames fits in this box, just like this. So when I open the lid, it looks like this right here. This I add a piece of black foundation to it. I like using black foundation because you can see the eggs at the bottom. Remember I told you the eggs were about a quarter, uh, I may not have, the eggs are about a quarter the size of a grain of rice, so they're very, very small. So, when I put the frames inside the beehive, see I told you it has this black foundation, and it tells you, it tells the bees what size foundation or what size cell to make. These are all worker bees. They're all small. The bees will draw their wax out. And then eventually, it looks like this right here. And they'll fill up the whole side of it. The queen bee will lay her eggs down here in the bottom. And then around it, there will be a ring of pollen. And up on the top corners is where the honey is. The bees are busy all spring, all spring. And so about... July and August, I go in and I pull the honey off. And this is the honey right here. It's called capped honey. And the bees bring nectar in, and they bring nectar straight from the flowers. The field bee will fly in, come to the front of the entrance, and pass it off to a worker bee. A house bee is what they call it. So the bees, this is going to sound nasty, the bees regurgitate or they kind of throw up some of that nectar. That they brought and they pass it along to another bee so honey is is basically is basically bee throw up right kind of sounds nasty but in order for the honey to ripen the enzymes in the bee's gut has to be mixed in with the nectar and so what they do is they put it up in the cells like this the worker bees stand on top of it and they flap their wings and flap their wings and they evaporate most of the moisture out of it Say if you bring in a quart, uh, say if you bring in a gallon of, of, of water, there's only going to be a quart of honey in it. So they, they evaporate about 80% of it down. So there's hardly any, any moisture. And you know, that's what keeps it from, from spoiling. That's what keeps it from going bad. 
I'm sure y'all know this, but in King Tut's tomb, did y'all know there was honey that was found that was still edible? You could still eat it. One of my other tools that I use that I haven't told you about yet is that it's called a hive tool. It has a J hook right here. It has a J on it. And it has a scraper right here. All this wax right here, the bees use it for a, a, a bee ladder. And sometimes it gets too much and I have to go in and I have to scrape this off and clean it off. I collect this all year long. I collect it and at the end of the season, I'll melt it down. I'll melt it down and I'll make beeswax out of it. Now, can anybody tell me what you can use beeswax for? Show me your hand. What's, what? Candles. Candles is one thing. Have y'all ever seen the orange beeswax candles? They, the beeswax candles burn very clean. A lot of the, the candles you'll get at Walmart or, or wherever, wherever you shop at, they're made from petroleum. So they smoke real bad and they, and they, they leave soot everywhere. Beeswax candles don't do that. They're very clean. What else can you make out of, out of beeswax, do you think? A house? Bees make, bees make a house out of beeswax. It's, it's possible you can, you can use it in your house for um, furniture pops. You can do that. What else do you think? Ma'am? A beehive? Okay. All right. What? Well, here's, here's one big clue what you can make. Or lip balm. You can. You add beeswax to lip balm and put it on. Ladies, gentlemen, there are beeswax, even royal jelly in some of the makeup or the shampoo you use. So bee products are used all, in a lot of different places. So it's it's uh it's sad that the bee population is declining, so that's why we have to have to try to keep keep them alive, right? Most of y'all have probably been over to the observation hive already. Have, did y'all see the queen? Show me your hands. Great, great. She had a green dot on her, right? So when I put her in there, she didn't have a dot. So I had to find her. And you know how hard that was? It took me about 20 minutes to find her because this beehive that I took her out of had about two box, two or three boxes on it. When they get really, really full in the summer, they can have 80,000 to 100,000 bees in it. And do you know how hard it is finding that one queen bee? It takes out sure, it's very hard. So, so I have to put a put a dot on her, so it helps me find her. But I also put a dot on her back to help me keep in mind how old she is. Every year we have a different color to put on a queen, so it helps us it helps us us keep track of our queen. Most queens live about two years. Some can live up to seven years. All right, we got a question here. So the bees have a birthday. We usually don't go by a birthday, we go by birth year. Like and let's say this queen, she was born last year. So we may keep so so I will let her live as long as she will. But chances are she's gonna get crowded and she's gonna swarm and she's gonna find a, a new place. Now, on that note, asking how long they live, queen bees have to stay perfect. All right, they have to stay perfect. They release a pheromone that those worker bees around her smell and spread to the other bees. If she doesn't smell a certain way, if it starts getting weak, those worker bees know that she, her health is in decline and they will they will kill her and they will create a new queen just like that. If if her wing breaks, they'll they'll kill her and 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 they will make a new queen. They want that queen in tip top shape because she's the one who controls the population. She's the one who lays the eggs. All right. So let, let, let me let me show you how I mark her. I have a, a tool here. It's called a one-handed queen marker, and I will put this. Uh, I'll find the queen, and I'll put this on the frame, and I close the door on it. See how the door closes? The door closes right, so I trap her in. And we have basically an elevator here on, on this part with a piece of foam on it. And I will raise this elevator up to the top. And the queen bee will be right here. She can still move a little bit. And I use this pin. It's non-toxic. And all I do, see in between these grooves, I just put a dot right on her. And I, I let it dry for a few minutes and I put her back in the hive. Now, if I go in six months from now, 
And check on my bees. And you know that got baby gone? Because it's the worker bee's responsibility to clean her, and right? And so they will groom this paint off of her sometime. All right, so that's why some people use the sticker. You got a question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You're right. She, her, her question was, isn't the queen bee bigger than the other bees? And she is exactly right. The queen bee is about twice the size of a worker. So, yes. Then that's another way you can find it, but it's hard to find the queen bee in all, all 80,000 of those. Are we close on time? Yeah, we're getting close. Okay. What well, last question? No, no, you're, you're okay. She her question was if the queen bee decides to swarm off, don't they kill her before she gets out the front door? They don't because when the queen the, the queen bee is actually following directions from the worker, the worker bees tell her to swarm because they fill in all those cells. And so, if there's no room, she knows to go ahead and swarm. And she takes about half the population in the current colony and she goes and finds a, a, a new place to live. All right, guys, we're almost short on time, so just give me a second. Teachers, if you want, there's a Kahoot I sent to you. It's 10 questions. It's a short one. Um, there's also some B articles with Achieve and all that if you want to do that. If not, I understand you've got a lot going on. All right, guys. I just want to see who remembers. About what percent of our food is associated with a bee? Thank you for raising your hand. 80%. Very good. There's three types of bees in a honeybee hive. What are the three types of bees? Thank you. The boy, they're called a drone. They're called a drone. Very good. All right, what do bees do? Why, how do they help us? So the brown bees go into spring bees so they can help us because without them, they're not going to get any red for us to eat. Okay, what they do is they grab a pollen and then they bring that back to make honey. You're right. But when they're grabbing that pollen and when it's sticking to them and going from flower to flower, it, it enables the plant to reproduce. And when that plant reproduces, it makes a fruit or vegetable. That's how we get our fruits and vegetables. And we need fruits and vegetables to grow our animals that we eat. Chicken, pig, cow. We need all that. It's a working ecosystem. And without them, we're in trouble. So the next time you see a big group of bees, don't spray them. Make a phone call. Humane. Humane Society. Being humane. Google beekeeper. And you will find phone numbers and stuff on the web that tells you who to call. And they'll come. Get it for free. Get it out of the area. So... Guys, uh, your behavior was astounding. Thank you so very much, teachers. Thank you. Wow. I hope this is something different. Now, he did give you uh, B6. Yes, teacher should have it. Okay. Uh, when you get one, guys. Now, this is kind of cool before the fourth grade or third grade come in. This is honey right here. Notice how they're different colors. Why do you think they're different colors? They're, they're both honey. Why are the two honeys different colors? One is what? Nope. But uh, by the way, royal jelly, I'm impressed that you remembered that from back there. Bees feed a baby royal jelly if they need a new queen. Guys, different plants have different pollen. And different pollen is different colors. So it makes different honey. Now, in uh, fifth grade social studies, let's see how good you all are. Henry Ford created something to make production faster. What did he create? Assembly line. These were built on an assembly line. Little straws line up, a machine goes, that the honey that we pour in there fills them and then it welds it. It literally is a hot bar that goes, now, in order to open it, they're kind of hard to open if you don't listen to me. This right here is called a horizontal, like the horizon. If you turn it vertical where it's sitting up and you put your teeth right here and go, It'll pop right open. You do it this way, you got to sit there and gnaw on it. So remember that. You want it vertical, straight up and down. Teachers, thank you. I hope it was beneficial, something different. I hope everybody has a fantastic spring break. And we are complete. Thank you, guys. Thanks, teachers. Yes. These are little holes. The holes are cells. That's where she puts the eggs. And then all the other bees, they throw up on the air. 
I know, that doesn't make no sense, does it? Have you ever had honey before? Yeah. You ate beet thrower. That's what it is. Well, I'm going to give you some honey today to let you try. But it is. It's bee vomit. That's what they're doing. Now, as you can see, the queen, what she does is she'll drop an egg into one of those holes. Those holes are called felt. And then they cover it up. And that little larva begins to grow. And it grows into a bee. And then she eats her way out. If you come over on this side, you can really see. Careful. If you look down, you can see all the yellow. You can see some babies down there, a little white grub looking thing. If we break it, you're going to have a lot of bees in here. But, Mr. Travers already tested. We already dropped it twice. Without bees. It's, it's double contained. I wasn't going to be on the news. <laughs> So, but that's a beehive. Now, this is only one frame. There's like 20 of them in a real beehive. Like 60, 70, 80,000 bees. There's only about 2,000 bees. And throughout the year, they get more and more bees. Until, this, until the end of summer, then they kick all the boys out. What's cool about a queen bee is she lays eggs, and if she wants worker bees, she only has girls. She can pick if she has a boy or a girl. When she needs to reproduce, then she'll uh, grow some boys. All right. All right, let's go back. Let me get the next group. Thank you, guys. Be back there.